So to prevent any potential later on clout chasing from the choke, let's look at some of these missions first. Now most of these missions, as you see that are blue, most of these are close quarters, except for Potomac. Potomac actually has a big open area. So if you're gonna show damage or range or anything like that, there's this little section right in here when you first start off. Most of these, like this one over here, especially Federal Emergency, is close quarters. You're always gonna have within 30 meters. Same with all of these other ones. You're first gonna engage in sight of buildings or something like that, and you're going to have pretty much close encounter engagements on pretty much every single one, except for probably viewpoint when you first start off. Other than that, there's this one over here, Lincoln Memorial, at the very beginning, you're gonna be in open area. But most of these other ones, except for these specific ones, you're going to have close quarters. So, don't have to worry about that now. See, unlike some content creators, I actually do PvP. I've got my stuff over here for the Dark Zone. i got my stuff for the Raid. I've got all these things and accolades. I've done them all. I actually go and put the test of these builds and things like this into PvE and PvP before I ever come over here and give you any kind of advice or just mainly to show you what you may not know. That's exactly what I did. If you take a look at this right here, I asked y'all about the EB. Did you know it could stack tenacity on a decoy? That's all I wanted to know. Because some people don't know these things. They simply don't. Some people ask me questions. Hey, what do you think is going to be better on the Bighorn? So I go and I do the tests for you guys. Because some people don't know how to test. We've seen that in content creators who literally try to compare damage talents to survivability talents. Which you can't do unless you actually put it up against a survivability talent. So when we do tests like this right here, we're trying to demonstrate what's going to be best, like I said in a video, of the Bighorn. So we have critical hit damage right here. But we want to know ahead of time, do we really want damage targets that I cover or do we want the headshot damage? Because again, I asked you guys in the poll and this is what I got. So now that I have that poll and I figured out what you guys voted on, we're going to take this build right here and we're going to put it to the test. Again, we got the perfect, uh, we got the perfect talents, critical hit damage, critical hit chance, got everything. But this is the one piece. I have a set of Overlord. Now, why do I have a regular set of Overlord? Is because we have to take off the damage to targets out of cover. As you see, I have crit chance and critical hit damage right here. So this is how we can accurately test these things because we're keeping everything the same, the rifle damage, everything. So all we're gonna trade out is the crit chance that we have on here and put on damage targets out of cover and headshot damage where the crit chance is. Then I also have some people who were in a, I was in a clan with that I left because they were rude and things like that who actually said that critical hit damage does not stack with headshot damage. So we're going to prove this stuff wrong. So as you can see, we're stacking everything we possibly can because also one person asked, does it only stack on headshots? Yes, it's on the weapon. It states that. So you have to land headshots. While the gun is not accurate for landing headshots, it really has probably one of the worst bounces for all ARs because the EB does actually land good shots. This one has a very bad bounce to it. But as you can see, we're landing for about 1011 right here. Now that is with the critical hit chance and critical hit damage knee pads that we have. Now if we were to take this out and go put on say headshot damage like I just did, we could actually find out if we want the headshot damage on this or damage to targets out of cover. So as you can see, we just took the crit chance, left the critical hit damage. So these will match the foxes. That's how we test it. We take one piece that it doesn't have in the same comparison out of the spot and put it in here. So now we're hitting for, once it's maxed out, 103. 
So we're hitting a little bit stronger, just a little bit because of the headshot damage. So that does count. So now that we know we're hitting for 1030, let's put on damage to targets out of cover and see what we max out now. We've already hit 105, 107, 1062, looks like 1092. So again, we max out even more with damage to targets out of cover in that spot. Now, to prove also that that's going to be additive for or multiplicative or whatever you want to call it because some people don't know the difference, we're just going to say it boosts it because we have to be simple about it. We have a piece right here of Grupo with headshot damage, with health. So before I go adding in the critical hit damage to this specific piece where the health is, let's get some damage numbers. And again, this gun goes all over the damn place. So over here for 1061, 1061. So let's go grab this piece. Now, after we've changed it, again, boom, as you can see right down here, we've just put critical hit damage on. So some people say that the headshot damage in this doesn't help each other out. We gotta beat 1061, right? Let's see if it does it. One o eight six case and point, case and point. I got it earlier. You had a really happy face. Now you got a fucked off one. Again, I can come down here and make everything look beautiful for you guys, and put on things that just make the build look great, and talk about random ass bullshit like Ranger and things like that. Come out here and show that. Oh look, there's the feet right there. Oh, I could just do a little bit of math and figure out what the feet is right here to meters. When I want a damage target versus a damage talent or talent, I could take this damage talent right here off this and show how beautiful it looks. Get the range, everything else from a far, far away. But you're not going to engage like that. These weapons have a specific damage drop off point. Now those drop off points, you're not gonna use it like this. You're not gonna be that far away. Why? Because at 40 meters is where this thing maxes out. This specific weapon, the Bighorn, maxes at 40 meters. So I'm not gonna go engage anything less than 40 meters away. As you can see, the damage drop off point, which is right there. I can come over here, look at my stats. This is easy to figure out numbers. The farthest best range damage is gonna be 40 meters and it drops off after that, which means I'm getting less damage. So why would you want less damage on something that's farther away? And you can see this one's damage drop off point, the damage drop off point. You can find out where those are. This is not hard to find math, ladies and gentlemen. And I'm not trying to dog you or anything like that. If you don't know, simply just ask. I'll show you how to find this type of stuff. I have no problem trying to help out anybody to give you the proper information, accurate, quantified numbers that are easily obtained in this game. If you don't know, just ask. I don't care. Because I'm going to go over these talents. Like I said, people said, well, does it stack on headshots? It's right here on the weapon. This is easy to find information. So if you can't find it, believe me, I will still help you because that is what I'm here to do. I'm here to guide you guys as a content creator to give you the accurate information, not opinions, nothing that can't be factually found off this game, actual damage numbers, factual information, and that's what I do. If you don't like it, by all means, don't subscribe, don't like, I don't care, just have a good time.